All right, thanks. Buenas tardes a todos, ¿qué tal? All right, I'm sure a lot of you know a lot of Spanish. Uh, but I am, let me just start off by saying that I'm so extremely humbled and honored to be here. Uh, just like what Pastor Christian said, you know, I'm not a, a guest speaker. I'm, I'm part of the family. I, I originally am from here. Um, so thank you so much, Pastor Chris, for inviting us. Um, now let me, say, let me say this. This is not a, you know, I appreciate you, you appreciate me moment. But I just would like to also mention this time and maximize this time to be able to honor your pastor, uh, Pastor Christian and Joanne, who's here. Where's Joanne? It's, anyway, she's there right there. Anyway, uh, actually, we are actually contemporaries. If parang bo, parang tanda ko na nung... Anyway, we're just contemporaries, and I know, listen, I know that Pastor Christian and I never had a chance to work together, but the fact that he's, one, that he's here and he's your senior pastor, I know that he's one of our finest pastors in our spiritual family. He really is. So I want to tell you that you are so blessed, especially, you know, being, uh, you know, uh, the Lord has given me a chance to be able to, uh, you know, plant a church. I know how it is, you know, the... The, 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 the work and the labor of a pastor. It's not just like every Sunday we're here, we're preaching. It's more than that. So I'd like us to please, you know, again, we don't, I'm, I'm sure you don't do this every day. I'm, I'm sure you don't do this every Sunday, but can we give Pastor Christian and Joanne and even the pastoral staff a big round of applause to honor them for what they're doing? No, thank you. And, um, you know, just like what Pastor Christian said, you know, I've been in Spain. In fact, I want to show you a picture of my family right here. Um, so I'm 100% Filipino, and then my wife is about 80% Austrian and 20% Italian. And when we met in Nashville and Tennessee, especially when the first time she laid her eyes on me, she, uh, I was like, you know, she just couldn't forget me. And then she stalked me. And eventually, I said, okay, I'm going to No, no, I'm sure my, I mean, the only reason why I say this is because my wife is not here with me. So that's the only reason why. But no, anyway, after about, uh, you know, 15 years of marriage, you know, the Lord has graciously given us two Austria Pinais. You know, my, my eldest, the one wearing uh, the, the beige bonnet, and she's actually 13. We have, you know, we were uh, talking a, uh, a minute ago, Pastor Christian and Joanne have, you know, well, they have three, I have two. But our eldest are the same ages, so we have, uh, I have 13, uh, a 13 year old uh, daughter, and then my youngest, the same thing with them, is actually 10. And here's what's crazy, I don't know, I mean, bro, baka maging BFF talaga tayo, bro. Kasi the, the birthday, the birthday of, of Joanne is June 18, the birthday of their youngest is June 18, and the birthday of my youngest is June 18. What the heck? So anyway, so we have... Uh, you know, I'm, 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 we have a lot of stories to tell. I'm sure we get a chance to, uh, to meet more. But anyway, uh, so this is my family. This is really who I am after, you know, being a son of God. I am, you know, um, a husband and a, um, and a father to, uh, you know, to this amazing family. So we've been in Spain for about 13 years now. Could you believe that? And about 10 years ago, something very significant happened. You know, the Lord has enabled us to plant and at the same time to launch our Every Nation Madrid Spain and that's called Vida Pasionada. And uh, in English it's called Passionate Life Church. Okay? But the very thing I really would like to tell all of you, I really want to brag on, is this family. Right there. I'm sure a lot of you know, know them. Um, if you do not know them, I mean this is Ryu and Jam and they are part of this spiritual family. Now, now listen, I'm, I mean let, let's pray for them, huh? Kasi they're in Bohol, they're suffering for the Lord. So, pag pray talaga natin sila, I'm sure ngayon, grabe. Siguro umiiyak sila sa saya <laughs> But anyway, they're not here. But Rayu and Jam decided that they were going to be in Spain because they felt the call of God in Spain. Now listen, a lot of people have talked to me about Madrid, you know, when they, when they found out that I'm, you know, uh, planting a church and, and pastoring a church. I mean, they would say, hey, Pastor, you know, I, I feel God is calling me. I mean, Literally a lot of people, and I could also tell you that literally only two people followed up on that, Ryu and Jam. So it's normally easy to, I mean, I, the Adalias are here. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. I mean, you are heroes in the faith. 
But a lot of Filipinos, and I may say this one, a lot of Filipinos would say, you know, we have a staff member who's going to Indonesia, right? Um, and um, amazing, people would say, oh, that's great, you know. But somehow, somehow, I'm not talking about you guys, because you guys are amazing. I'm talking about other people. Some other people, when they think that, oh, pagpapadala tayo ng mga missionaries sa, sa States or sa Europe, parang impossible yan. Well, I'm here to tell you, you guys did it. And I specifically asked Pastor Michael if I could be here and to specifically and officially thank all of you for the amazing, amazing investment that you are doing in the nation of Spain in Madrid by investing us, this family. Listen, Ryu, Jam, and now we have Leora, who's super cute. You know, uh, I mean, they are heading up our, or Ryu's heading up our, our um, what do you call it, Alabanza, like, uh, sorry. A worship, our worship, um, you know, team, and Jam is, is amazing in, 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 in tech, but most, most of all is that they are really discipling not just other nationalities, but discipling madrileños. Can you believe that? Ryu is amazing in Spanish. He's preaching in Spanish now. I mean, you could just be proud of these guys. And so, again, I want to officially thank you, Pastor Christian, Joanne, for, you know, for uh, investing them. Thank you for supporting them prayerfully and financially. You are the reason why we are existing in that part of the world. So give yourselves a big, big hand. Thank you. So when, I'm sure you guys also have your missions uh, Sunday, right? I mean, listen, again, when you have your mission Sunday, it's more than a program. Hindi lang yung parang, oh, mag-mission sun, mag sun, mag Sunday tayo isang araw, or isang Sunday, tas para okay, para ma- magbigay ng report. Literally, you are investing, and literally, you are affecting people's lives, and even nations. So, wag yung sabihin lang, ah, that's another mission Sunday. I mean, again, the Adalus, we know, will be able to tell you that. So, thank you so much. The other thing I would like to, I want to take this time, sorry, Pastor Christian, but I really want to take this time, is to honor the moms of these people. So, if you're here, Sol and Marie, Sol, I see you. Can you stand up, please? Sol, Marie, where are you? Yeah. Remain standing. Remain standing. You know, they were able to visit us also in Spain, uh, you know, uh, to see their grand, you know, their granddaughter. But I really want to honor you because I know it's, it's not easy for a parent to say, oh, sige, alis na kayo. Di ba? I mean, especially, hindi lang naman yan sa tondo, di ba? I mean, sa Spain yan. So it's not easy for parents to be able to invest their kids. And so Marie, Sol, and I know Joji is here. Is Joji here also? Joji, can you stand up? I mean, Joji's daughter also is in Spain. Um, I know she's from our Metro East. But thank you so much for saying yes. Although it's exciting, there's a lot of, a, a lot of tears as well. So thank you. Because you're not just, you're doing your part. And thank you for saying yes to God. I know saying yes to God is never easy, but you guys do it. So thank you so much for, for doing that. Can we just give him a big, big hand for us? Thank you. Anyway, I'll start now. Okay. Sige. Anyway, so I, I mentioned that uh, merong something significant that happened to us about 10 years ago in Spain. And you know, now we have uh, a church there. If and when the Lord gives you an opportunity, please make sure you visit us there. We are part of the family. It's going, to, I mean, we have a, a Taglish service. There's a lot of Filipinos here, but also we have a Spanish service. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to understand that because we have a lot of Spanish words. So please, you know, make sure that you, that you um, uh, visit us there. So talking about something significant, you know, I got here the last week of March and I was able to witness amazing or the, the, something significant that happened in our nation. That was the election. Now, here's what I can say. I'm a Filipino. Um, and during or before the election and during the election, especially after the election, I mean, the emotions were just so high, okay? I'm sure maybe you're here. I mean, also, by the way, if you're watching us online, thank you for watching. Maybe you are watching us right now and maybe you're here and you were there. You had some different spectrums of emotions. On, the, on one hand, probably you are elated. You are rejoicing, diba? Kasi nanalo yung candidate mo. Maybe, but on the other side of the coin, maybe you are frustrated. You're angry. You could not believe it. Hindi na yung candidate mo. Or maybe you're actually in the middle. You don't care. 
In fact, one person you know, I, was able, you know, I was talking to before the election, sabi niya, I mean, what, is it, what, is it, what do we care anyway? Every time there's an election, ano ba nangyari sa bansa natin? Ano ba nangyari? So again, there's different, and then, my goodness, social media. It was just on fire. And then the other thing is that, the other thing that I, that I heard was this. How come the church, and I'm just going to, itago na lang natin sa pangalang victory yung church, okay? Huwag na natin sabihin. <laughs> Bakit daw yung church walang comment sa elections? Well, you couldn't come at a better time because we're going to talk about that now. Okay? Now, l- Listen. Again, I don't know if your candidate won. I don't know if you, I mean, if, if you were vying for this candidate and, this, and, the, and the, your candidate lost, or maybe you just don't care. So, but the, I'm sure that you are probably asking some questions. Okay? Now, maybe right after three weeks of elections, no, so I'm sure maybe siguro yung emotions may medyo bumabana, pero meron pa rin tayong mga questions. So maybe you're asking the question, what are we going to do now? Right? What are we going to do now? I mean, uh, again, I was talking to some other people. I mean, some, somebody in their family was saying, you know, some companies would leave. and I mean, just crazy, crazy. Now, you, as you're sitting down here, and as probably you go back to your work, you go back to, you know, your online class tomorrow, or whatever you're doing, or maybe you're online. I don't know what you're, what you're doing. But now the question is, what are you going to do now? Or maybe the better question is, how should we respond now, I mean, we cannot stop that. You know, June 30 is coming. The new administration is coming. And we as a church, or maybe, again, let me just say this. Maybe you're here for the first time. Maybe you're part of this church. Or maybe you were just dragged here. I mean, or I don't know what your spectrum of faith is. Maybe you believe in Jesus. Maybe you read your Bible. Or maybe you don't. I, it doesn't really matter. The question is, what are we going to do now? And how should we respond? You know, what's so interesting here is that, oops, um, that's not my slide. Anyway, what's interesting here is that, um, you know, we will be able to answer the questions, you know, to uh, uh, the answer. I mean, we will be able to, to know the answer to these questions by, you know, by, by um, I'm sorry, I was distracted by this one, sorry. Um, by um, uh, going into this book in the Bible called Daniel. Now, probably this is the picture of Daniel, maybe. But again, maybe you, you read your Bible, maybe you know this, maybe you do not know this one, okay? But this book was actually written by, the na- by this guy named, not really a trick question, Daniel, okay? In fact, again, maybe, you, uh, again, as you are watching online, this might be your first time, or maybe you've been here for the first time, or maybe second time, but we actually have been talking about this series for a couple weeks now, and the series is called Beyond Kings and Kingdoms. Now, most of you maybe you've been here for quite a while now know why this is entitled Beyond Kings and Kingdoms. Maybe some of you do not know this one, but I will let you know why, you know, in, as, as we go along. But anyway, this series is based off of, you know, this book in the Bible called Daniel, okay? And listen, in the part of the world where I'm at, a lot of people don't believe the Bible. A lot of people that what they read in the Bible is actually they think that it's a folklore. It's not true. Or maybe it's a, it's, it's, it's a compilation of stories that you mentioned to your kids so that they could sleep in the evening. Okay? But I'm here to tell you now that what we're going to talk about now is not folklore. It's actually a piece of history. And what's so interesting about this one is this piece of history was actually documented in this book of the Bible called Daniel. In fact, 597 BC, I'm sure you know this one, especially if, you're, you know, if your major is history or you like history, 597 BC, the Babylonians, which is right now called Iraq, you know, attacked Jerusalem, they ransacked the whole city, destroyed the whole city, and they took captive a lot of Israelites, four of which were from the royal family. Now, let me tell you their names. First, Daniel, and that's the account that we're going to read today. And then his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which actually you guys talked about, if I'm not mistaken, last week or the other week. So, so now, so what, what happened is that after the Babylonians, you know, the Medo-Persian Empire attacked the Babylonians and won. So what's so interesting is that Daniel actually lived through different kings. Now, first and foremost, the first king that he served was King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, this is not Nebuchadnezzar, okay? But after that, it was actually King Belshazzar, the son and then when the Medo-Persian Empire started, it was this king. It's, it's called King Darius. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And you know what's so interesting is that as we talk about this story today, we will be able to find out the answer to our question, what are we going to do now? 
how should we respond in light of the recent held elections? Whether you are a Christian or not, whether you are a member of this church or not, whatever your spectrum of faith is or belief is, I think this word is for you. Okay? So, here's what happens. King Darius, this guy, was a, in fact, again, piece of history. He was actually called Darius the Great. You know, one of the amazing things about this guy it was he was a, an administrative genius. In fact, here's what he did. You know, he, because the Medio Persian Empire was so big, so what he did was he assigned 120 provincial governors or satraps, as we call it. So 120 provincial governors for all the kingdom, and then he stationed three guys or three people to oversee this 120 provincial governors. Are we following? Yeah. Okay. So now we have three amazing guys, top of the line, and one of which was Daniel, okay? But here's the thing. Daniel was so amazing. He has an exceptional quality that he bested all of those people. In fact, he was so good that King Darius thought, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this guy as the head of my kingdom. So now, so here's what you can imagine. So when the people heard that, they got insecure. So they wanted to do something about it. So now here's where the story starts. He said, at this, the administrators and the satraps trying to find grounds for charges against Daniel and his conduct of government affairs, but they, were not, but they weren't able to do so. Why is that? Why is that? I mean, how did, they, how did he conduct himself? Well, he tells us. Well, they could not find no corruption in him. Why is that? Because he was trustworthy. And neither corrupt nor negligent. Listen, again, for some of you reading your Bibles and you're a Christian, you're saying you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we just read the Bible like that and we don't really understand this one. Listen, the context here is that, that Daniel was a Jew serving a non-Jew. It's kind of like, I'm going to be amazing and I'm going to be excellent as long as I like my boss. But this guy, his boss, he didn't like it because he was not the same race he was Iranian, Medo Persian is Iranian. At the same time, he thought himself as a god. He was, they were not worshiping the god of Jews. So for him to say this, or for him to say that they, they couldn't find no corruption, that means he was consistent, he was constant in his character. And that was something amazing because for you to work for somebody you don't like and still be excellent, that's amazing. So, what did they do? Because he was so amazing. I mean, ang galing niya talaga. Wala sila makita. So, ang galing ang nangyari ito. So, so, finally, this man said, well, we will never be able to find any basis for charge against this man, Daniel. It has something to do with the law of his God. Again, please, let's, let's understand this one. We are talking about unbelievers. We are talking about non-Jews. And for them to be able to say, we're not going to be able to find anything against this guy unless it has something to do with the law of his God. That meant Daniel was consistent, not just in front of the, his fellow Jews, but most especially to the people who did not believe in his God. Galing, di ba? Panalo to. So, ang ito, mga to, insecure nga, di ba? We have to find something. We have to find something. We got to get him out. So, next staff meeting sila. So ngayon, after nung nag-staff meeting sila, sabi niya, we're gonna do this. So they, they devised a plan, and here's what they did. They went to the king, they told the king their plans. So ano yung pinag-usapan nila? Ito yung sabi nila kay King Darius. Sabi nila, the royal administrators, the prefects, the satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. In other words, they need to be killed. And then they, they, they added this thing. Now your majesty issued a decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Now, we got to understand this one. They had laws at the time. The Medo persian Empire had laws. But then when the king invents another one, when the, key, when the king issues a decree and he also puts it in writing and he puts his seal, that means it's an additional law that cannot be changed. Why? Because the people during that time, they saw the king as an incarnation of the gods, which means that king cannot change and that king cannot have mistakes. 
So we understand this now. It's an additional law. And so, of course, because King Darius was, you know, feeling Joshua, so he actually said, okay, well, we'll do it. So King Darius put the decree in writing. So now, here's the question now. Where's Daniel? What did he do? Well, let's find out. So when Daniel learned the decree had been published, he, guess what? Let's see. When Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he immediately planned to start a riot to overthrow the government and kill the ones who accused him. Well, I mean, that would, be, that would have been okay. I don't know. I mean, that's another version. That's a version of Guapo Men. But, but, <laughs> thank you, sir. I bought it. I mean, that's exactly what I would have done. Seriously. Maybe some of you would say, I would have done the same thing. Hindi tama to eh. Mag, mag, whatever. But is that what he did? Well, let's, let's look at the real thing. <laughs> now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home. Muwe. To his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. What did he do? Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God Listen, just as he had done before. Meaning, not only he was consistent and constant before the non-Jews, he was also consistent and constant before God. Wow. I mean, I don't know about you, but again, I'm, you know, if we're going to read Guapo Mel's version, I would have done something, but this guy just went home and started to pray. Now, so what happened? To make the long story short, so obviously the nemesis decided to spy on this guy, and then they found out that that's okay lang bang bumaba ako? Hindi ba? Okay lang. So what happened was, the nemesis found out, spied on him, and then what happened was, they found him. Aha, nagpapare ka. So they went to the king, told the king about that. Sabi, ito na yung natin, opportunity natin. So, sabi na, sabi na sa king, king, di ba? Ito yung sinabi natin, di ba? So, so, ngayon, yung king walang nagawa. Parang, no, you said that. It's a law. You cannot change it. It cannot be repealed. So, you have to kill this guy. You have to throw in the lion's den. So, obviously, the king, listen, listen to this. The king, even though he was a non-Jew, he was a non-believer. He didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in the God of the Jews. He was so distressed. Kasi gusto niyang isave si, si Daniel, eh. So, pero wala siyang magawa, eh. Kasi law na yun, eh. So basically he said, okay, let's, let's do that. So he, he gave the orders, throw him the lines then. And then, he, you know what's so interesting? Before, or when he said that, or when he gave the orders, it thinks he said Daniel. Very interesting. He said, may your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. Wow. Galing, di ba? It was a non-Jew, a non-believer who said, may your God, meaning, meaning he's, he's basically saying, I know the people think that I'm a God and I know that you think I'm not a God and that's very offensive to me, but somehow it's fine. But may your God whom you serve continually, meaning you're consistent. I see that. You're constant. Even though I'm loco, you still do what you're, what you're supposed to do. May he serve you and, or may, may he rescue you. So anyway, so he was thrown in the lines then. Went back to his palace. He couldn't sleep that night. In fact, he was so distressed. And then the next day, at the break of dawn, he, he goes back. And then he asks. He said, Daniel, servant. <laughs> this guy. Serving of the living God. Sige na yun? Servant of the living God has your God. And then he said it again. Whom you serve continually. Gosh, do I really have five minutes left? Okay, I'll, 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 I'm... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whom you serve... Okay lang sir. Thank you, sir. Whom you, whom you serve continually. <laughs> Being able to rescue from the lions. Again, inulit na naman niya. Daniel, Daniel. Has your God... Whom you serve continually, meaning you're consistent, you're constant, being able to re rescue from the lions, and lo and behold, somebody answered Daniel. Here's what he said. May the king live forever. And by the way, every time they say that, it's a, it's a courtesy. May the king live forever. May God, my God, 
sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found what? Innocent in his sight. Meaning, he looked at me and he said, you're consistent, you're fine. Wow. And another, another thing is that, he said, nor have I ever done any wrong before your majesty. Meaning, again, not only am I consistent with my God, but also you, my king, I've never done anything wrong. My records are clean. I've been consistent. I've been constant. So, of course, you can imagine, when the king found out about this, when the king heard that, that he was alive, I mean, that was a miracle, seriously. So what did he do? Immediately he gave orders, get Daniel out of the lion's den, and those guys who accuse this guy, be thrown into the lion's den, but not only them, but not only them, but also their family and their children. Wow. We're talking about a non-Jew. And then, look at what he says, King Darius. The guy in the king who everybody thought was a god. Here's what he said. I, I issue a decree, a law, that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. Wow. He's basically saying, I see it now. <laughs> I am a God, but this God is a different level. Wow. And why is that? Why did King Darius say that? He tells us the reason. He says, because he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. Why is that? Well, because he has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. In summary, if we, are going, if we were going to summarize what King Darius said about the God of Daniel, it would be this, that the God of Daniel is sovereign. Meaning, no matter what I do, even though I'm in power, even though I'm the most powerful man in the, on the face of the earth right now, and even though Daniel most likely would not have agreed with all of the things I'm doing, he did not panic. He did not kill those people. I saw it. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a member of Victory Katipunan. I'm not even tithing. I saw it. And he's sovereign. Wow. He is sovereign. Wow. It's not even a... Come on, again, I, I can't emphasize this so much. A non-Christian said that. Yeah. How much more Christians? Yeah. How much more disciples like you and I? Right. So what happened? It says here, it says, so Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Daniel served four kings. It's amazing. It's amazing. And then... Daniel chapter 6 ends like that. What is the message for all of us, guys? Again, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, whether you believe in God or not, maybe it's your first time here or not, wherever in the spectrum of faith you are right now, what is the message of God for us? What is He telling us in light of the recent elections? What are we going to do now? You know what? There is this thing in the Bible, it's called chiasmus, where the biblical authors would always repeat something to emphasize a point because at that time they didn't have computers. They could not put bold or they could not underline. So they would repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Now, let's look at what he repeated. He said this, They could not find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy. And neither corrupt nor negligent. He was consistent. He was constant before the non-Jews. Then after that, he said three times a day in Daniel chapter 6, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done. He was consistent. He was constant before God. And then another one, the king said to Daniel, may your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you continually, meaning consistent, meaning constant. Whatever happens, whatever the political change was, he was consistent, he was constant. And then another one, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Isn't that amazing? And then another one. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have, they have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. What was the response of Daniel? What did he do? 
Every time he served a different king, there was a change in the political arena. And I want you to understand this one. If there was an election at that time, I'm pretty sure he would not have voted for these kings. Why? Because they were not the same race and they didn't have the same faith that he had. But what did he do? He decided to be consistent. He decided to be constant. He decided to, to, to respond in faithfulness to God. That's what he did. He was just faithful. Now, lest I would be misinterpreted, again, it's not, I'm not just talking about whether your candidate has won or maybe your candidate has lost. Despite what happened or because of what happened in our elections, God will still be sovereign. God will still be sovereign. But the question for each and every one of us is this. If Daniel was faithful, how was he able to do that? Because, hey, again, I mean, right now, I'm preaching this one. I mean, come on, what am I doing? I'm just sitting right here. I'm just talking to you. It's easy for me to say that. But Daniel was there living that at that moment. And maybe you're here as well. Maybe you're actually living right now, or maybe you are in a situation in your work, and you just don't like your boss. You just don't like him, or you just don't like her. Or maybe you're under an authority, and you just don't like the authority. Or the same thing right now. Again, I don't know. Maybe you like the, the future administration or not, or you just don't care. What are we supposed to do? I think we should be, you know, uh, uh, doing what Daniel did, which is just be faithful. And I'm going to say this a little bit more as, as we go along. But how did Daniel become faithful? Now, this is the last installment of Beyond Kings and Kingdoms. Now, I want you to understand this one so that we'll be able to understand everything as well. In the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, in fact, Daniel, when he was writing this account, he put a lot of pair of stories. Daniel chapter 1 was kind of the introduction of what happened, but Daniel chapter 3 and 6, which you guys talked about, is a pair of stories. These are three stories telling about the persecution of the God of, 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 and the people of God, and then a call for them to become faithful, even though they were suffering God was still calling them to still be faithful. And the reason why they were suffering because of these, you know, because of these unbelieving kings, which was in Daniel 4 and actually Daniel 5, which is another pair of story, which if, if I believe, you talked about that last week. And that's the reason why in Daniel chapter 2 and 7, it talks about the visions that Daniel received. What were the visions about? It was about, again, God encouraging the people of God and saying, I know it's not what you think it is, I know it's not what you want, but I'm sovereign, I'm permitting this thing, but I'm still on the throne, therefore be encouraged. That's why he was giving the vision. In fact, in Daniel chapter 8 to 12, they were talking, I mean, this was, this is basically a talk of possibly when these visions could happen. But basically, the book of Daniel, Beyond Kings and Kingdoms, was written to a people who were suffering. Listen, I could not think of any other worse story than a country being invaded Okay, and believers, you know, I, I should say, believing in the God of the Jews, but they were invaded. God, if you are God, then why did you allow this to happen? Why is that? But God allowed it. God allowed it. And then at this particular time, this book of Daniel was saying, guys, I know this is happening, but I want you to know, even in this moment, that there's one thing that I want you to remember, and this is also the message of God for each and every one of us, especially in light of the recent health elections. What was the cause of Daniel being faithful? How did Daniel become faithful amidst all of these things? It was really because of this one thing that Daniel was talking about, and if we could just summarize it in one sentence, it would be this, that God rules and is sovereign over the kingdoms on earth. Listen, I do not know if you voted for, your, for, for this candidate, or you voted for the other candidate, and maybe you are happy, maybe you are frustrated, maybe you are sad, maybe you just don't care, or maybe right now you are making plans. Listen, I want you to understand, and I, I, I want to be able to impart this to you, because I am a Filipino myself. Now, I, I'm so thankful that the destiny of this nation, that the destiny of the Philippines is not dependent solely on the person sitting on the seat of the presidency, but the person who is sitting on the throne and his name is Jesus Christ. God is sovereign. Despite or because of, he's able to remove, he's able to put. King Nebuchadnezzar, was he a Christian? King Belshazzar, was he a Jew? 
King Darius, did he, did he have a heart for God? The question was, even though these people were put in power, did God panic? Oh my gosh, <laughs> seriously. I mean, these guys are not my guys. Did it stop? Did it ever inhibit the plans of God in the history of this world? Never. In fact, we're reading it today because God is sovereign. Go ahead. You can, you can give God a big, big hand. The question for each and every one of us is this. I know a lot of you love our nation. A lot of you absolutely want the best for our nation. I do too. But sometimes, maybe your plan is not the best. Maybe my plan is not the best. Maybe God's plan is. And I will do my best. And I will do my part. But at the end of the day, I cannot control the destiny of this nation. But God does. Obviously, we are going to experience. We are going to experience the consequences of our decisions. I know that. May that be good consequences or may, may that be not so good consequences. And if you're here and if you're a Christian and you say that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, we ought to pray for our leaders. We ought to pray that the presence of God will be with them. That they'll be wise because when they make wise decisions, we'll benefit from that. And if they don't, we'll experience that as well. But at the end of the day, do we, do you trust the sovereignty of God? And listen, when we fully understand the sovereignty of God, this will affect the way that we respond. If there's one thing and only one thing that I would like to impart to you guys, forget everything I mentioned today except the guapo mel. <laughs> it will just be one thing from this, that when we trust the sovereignty of God, we respond in faithfulness to God. That's exactly what, what Daniel did. When we trust, you really, you really truly trust in the sovereignty of God, what are you going to do? You're not going to panic. You're not going to be afraid. You're going to be faithful to God. How do, we, how do we apply this now as I land this plane? When we trust the sovereignty of God, here are the two questions I wanted to ask. Number one. Are your actions or decisions motivated by fear or faith? Oh my gosh, you know, this, this, you know, this person is in power now. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, just in case you are sleeping or... I cannot be in this country anymore because... No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Whatever you do, do it as long as you think the Lord wants you to do it. But here's my question. Because sometimes, you know, being in a, in a Christian nation, we kind of mask our response as... Well, this is God. Well, in fact, I'm just afraid. Question is, whatever you do, your work, your business, your studies, your relationships, are you doing it because of fear or faith? And it's amazing. People are just debating on social media People are just bashing one another. If you don't vote for my candidate, how could you not vote for that person? I cannot believe you. And this and that, that, that. People are just canceling on one another. I even heard, you know, some leaders, just because their members are not voting for his candidate, would just cut them on Facebook. Listen, it's not about whether you're on the side of this candidate or you're on the side of this candidate. The question is, are you on God's side? And when I say, are you on God's side, it, I, this is exactly what I mean. I know probably you did not vote for my candidate. And I still could not believe that you could have voted for this person. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to let you speak. I'm not going to be angry at you. In fact, whether you get angry or not, I don't really care. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the right thing before God because I'm not for this candidate. I'm not for that candidate. I'm for God's side. And if I need to forgive, and if I need to love you, and if I need to listen to you just so that I can be on God's side, I will do it, period. That's what I'm going to do. Because I fully trust in the sovereignty of God, 
At the end of the day, it's not about your debate. It's not about your opinion. It's not about my opinion. It's about God's opinion. So, in, so instead of us fighting here, I'm just going to love you. You know why? Because this is our moment, church. This is our moment to be the salt and light of the Philippines, where everybody's bashing one another, when everybody's saying you know, say, you know, bad words to one another, when everybody's canceling when relationships one after the other, we as a church of God will continue to love, will continue to forgive, and will continue to pray because we know God is sovereign. Yes. Yes. He is. Yes. So I think we need to be faithful. And that's the last one. How do we respond in faithfulness to God? What did God call you to do before the elections? And then elections happened. Good. Question is, here, continue living. God's call on your life. The same thing with Daniel. After King Nebuchadnezzar became King Belshazzar, after King Belshazzar became King Darius, did he go like, oh my gosh, there's a different political leader now. I'm going to, no, no, no. God said, no, you stay there. I know it's not ideal, but I'm sovereign. This is my plan, Daniel. I'm sure a lot of people would read this story after a couple years, but you stay there. And Daniel knew that. What did God call you before the elections? What did he call you to do? Are you a mom? Continue to become a loving mom. Are you a dad? Continue being a great dad. Are you leading that business? Are you working for this company? Whatever God tells you to do, whatever God puts you, you become faithful so that these people would say, I don't believe in your God, but I see you. You're consistent. You are faithful and you bring glory to God. What did God call you to do before the elections? Because most likely God would say, just, just let me take care of the destiny of your nation while you become faithful to me. So, when we trust the sovereignty of God, we respond in faithfulness to God. Indeed, guys, Jesus is beyond kings and kingdoms. Indeed, we were singing, who can stop God? Not your comments, not your opinions. God is not calling us to do that. God is calling us to be faithful because He's sovereign. Because when we trust sovereignty of God, we respond in faithfulness to God. So why don't we get out of this room today believing, Jesus, thank you, because you are truly beyond kings and kingdoms. Let's pray. Father, Jesus Christ, I know I'm talking to intellectuals. But we are before the God of intellect. And you are sovereign. You rule. And you're calling us to be different. Especially when the political arena is here. It just divides us. But God, I thank you because when you died on that cross, you have once and for all removed that of which will divide us so it never ever will be divided but we'll be united under one banner. And that is your banner, Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the President of all presidents, Jesus, who is beyond kings and kingdoms. Help us as your church. And God, I repent in behalf of the church. I repent, God, if ever we bash people, if ever, you know, one time or many, many times we've quarreled over politics, God, please forgive us. Today, Jesus, cleanse us of our sins and help us to lift 
your name high above all names, above every political name, and we submit to you. Help us to be faithful, God. Whatever you have called us to do, help us to continue doing that. Be consistent. Be constant. We praise you, Jesus Christ, who is beyond kings and kingdoms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Can we all stand up? It is so good to hear the Word of God. Amen. It is so good. The Bible says God's Word, they're like a lamp unto our feet and they light up our path. And I hope that in the course of this series, we have heard God loud and clear. He's still in control. He's not panicking. And because of that, because He is consistently, constantly in control. As believers, we can also be consistent and constant in our efforts. But I know that takes a lot of grace. And so I would like for us at this time to lift up our hands to Him once again and receive from Him that grace to be constant, that grace to be consistent, that grace to be faithful. Heavenly Father, we lift up our hands to You one more time. Thank You for the grace that You give us to be faithful in everything that You've called us to do. Panginoon, salamat. For those of us who are students, Your call for us is to be a faithful student. For those of us in business, Lord, that's your call for us. Those of us in the academe, that's your call for us. Those of us in the government, that is your call for us. And so, Lord, let your grace solidify the call that you have given us. Help our eyes to fix on you, our, on you Lord, so that we will be consistent in honoring you. Thank you for this grace. We receive this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. As we are sent out from this place, I would like for us to read this passage of Scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Can we read this all together? One, two, three, go. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord... Your labor is not in vain. With that, go, be steadfast, be immovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, for your labor is not in vain. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next week, we're starting a new series, or we're going to have a series break next week. Bring your friends here. See you again next week.